This video will explain the ELECTRA model, developed by researchers at Stanford and Google. ELECTRA, abbreviating Efficiently Learning an Encoder that classifies token replacements accurately, introduces a new pre-training objective for training these large transformer models on unlabeled text data that is then fine-tuned for downstream tasks like the glue benchmark including sentiment classification, question answering, and natural language inference. The ELECTRA pre-training objective is more efficient and leads to better performance than the mass language modeling objective introduced in BERT. In a similar fashion to the GAN framework, Electra's replace token detection task pre-trains a transformer model as a large discriminator, predicting which tokens have been replaced by a lower capacity generator. Replace token detection is more efficient than mass language modeling because it defines the loss in the entire input sequence and removes the mass token from the training objective. Electra Small, trained on one GPU for four days, is able to outperform GPT, trained with 30 times more compute. They further show that the Electra model performs comparably to Roberta and ExcelNet with a quarter of their compute, outperforming them with the same amount of compute. This video will explain the details behind the Electra paper. This video will explain the Electra algorithm for pre-training these transformer language models for natural language processing applications. Electra is a much more efficient pre-training objective than other techniques like the mass language modeling technique proposed in BERT. This video will explain the replace token detection task introduced in Electra in the experiments described in the paper. This diagram illustrates the idea behind replace token detection. Compared to the previous mass language modeling technique introduced in BERT, where you have the input sequence and you replace 15% of the input tokens with this mass token, then you pre-train the transformer language model by having it predict the tokens that have been massed out in the mass language modeling pre-training objective. Electra is different because it couples the generator with a discriminator, similar to the generative adversarial network framework. The discriminator is going to predict which of the tokens come from the original input sequence and which have been changed by the generator network. So the full pipeline is that the input sequence is masked out, then it goes through a lower capacity generator network, and then it produces this new sequence. And the discriminator, which is the large capacity uh, transformer model that we're looking to pre-train and then fine-tune for downstream applications like sentiment classification, natural language inference, or question answering, is tasked with discriminating and predicting one or zero whether these tokens are from the original input sequence or if they've been replaced by the generator. This framework of having the discriminator network as the pre-training objective for our transformer model still has this bi-directional representation, is still attending over the entire sequence to make predictions about the original or replaced uh, output layer on the given token but it's also able to replace these uh, final embedding layer uh, values because it, the loss is applied to every token in the sequence compared to just the 15% that's been masked out and then replaced with the uh, generator predicting the new token in place of the mass token. It's also interesting because the generator provides challenging negative samples because the generator is trained as well on this mass language modeling task so it does a pretty good job of uh, replacing these mass tokens rather than just sampling randomly from the entire token vocabulary. Two reasons behind the efficiency gains in replace token detection compared to mass language modeling in BERT is that the task is defined over all the input tokens. So in the BERT objective, you have this attention over the entire sequence and then you predict the mass tokens in the output layer. But if say token T sub 1 hasn't been masked out, this final output embedding for T sub 1 isn't going to contribute at all to the loss function. So the way that you do this backpropagation gradient descent is you're taking the partial derivative with respect to all the parameters in the network. But the parameters in the network that produce T sub 1's uh, output embedding, if that isn't the mass token, it isn't going to be updated at all with the loss function. Compared to the replace token detection, where each uh, output layer is predicting original or replaced, they're getting that loss function applied to every token in the input sequence. So for that reason, it's more efficient with respect to changing the embeddings for all of the different input tokens. The other reason that the replace token detection task is more efficient than the mass language modeling objective is that it doesn't introduce this mask token. So in the train set, they introduce this mass token in order to define this uh, predict the mass token objective, but you don't then see that mass token in the test objective because it's just artificially constructed for this self-supervised learning task. So for these two reasons is why the authors describe that the Electra pre-training task is more efficient than mass language modeling. This plot shows the results of applying the Electra pre-training task with different levels of compute compared to models that predict this uh, autoregressive predict the masked out token, such as GBT, BERT, and Roberta. You see that the Electra small, base, and large models are all able to achieve high performance given a lower number of computing. Another interesting dimension of the Electra pre-training objective with replace token detection explored in this paper is the idea of weight sharing between the generator and discriminator network. So particularly they look at tying the weights between the token embeddings 
the embedding layer that goes from that input token that's been tokenized to something like word piece or byte pair encoding, and then putting that into an embedding in the generator and discriminator models because they both need to embed the input tokens and then pass them through the series of transformer layers to either generate the masked out token or predict whether it's the original or replaced token. So they find this gain by tying the token embedding weights as well as a higher gain for tying all the weights. But tying all the weights comes with additional uh, computational requirements, so it's most interesting to see this uh, gain achieved by just tying in the token embeddings. So particularly if the generator is going to be a lower capacity model than the discriminator, what they would do is add a linear projection from the discriminator embedding down into the generator. So say the uh, discriminator embedding has a 768 by one vector and the generator is uh, say 512 or 256, you would put a linear layer to project that same tied weight for the uh, 768 dimension embedding down into the generator. By tying these weights for the token embeddings, the generator and the discriminator are able to learn from both tasks. So it's definitely an interesting way of thinking about this and not something that's done in say the generative adversarial network framework to share weights between the generator and discriminator. The authors explore the capacity relationship between the generator and the discriminator, finding that the model works best when the generator is a quarter to half the size of the discriminator. They find that having too strong of a generator makes the task too challenging. If the generator is taking these mass tokens and replacing them perfectly, then it's impossible for the discriminator to really learn anything other than these slight little nuanced characteristics that discriminate the generator from the original input distribution. So for this reason, the generator is going to be a lower capacity language model than discriminator, because naturally you need some error in the generator to make the signal for the discriminator to learn possible. In order to isolate the factors leading to the compute efficiency gains in Electra compared to mass language modeling in BERT, such as defining this output loss over the entire input sequence and not introducing this mass token between the train test distribution shift, the authors define these three pre-training tasks as an ablation study to show the difference between uh, mass language modeling in BERT and then replace token detection in Electra. Electra 15%, where you have the Electra loss on 15% of the tokens, replace MLM and all tokens MLM. The Electra 15% pre-training objective is similar to the BERT mass language modeling objective in that you only define the loss on the 15% of the tokens that were originally masked out. So the, if you remember the pipeline with the replace token detection, what we're doing is we have this original processing of taking the input sequence, masking out 15% of it, then passing that through the generator to get the new sequence, and then having the discriminator classify each token as original or replaced. In the Electra 15% setting, we're only classifying or defining the loss on the 15% of the sequence that has originally been masked out before it goes through the generator. In the replace mass language modeling task, instead of masking out the 15% of input tokens with the mask token that is specially defined for this task, you replace them with randomly sampled tokens and the generator processes the entire sequence and then the loss is only defined on these tokens that have been swapped out with random tokens. So in this way, it solves the discrepancy of introducing this mask token in the pre-training objective. The third task is all tokens mass language modeling. I actually wasn't exactly sure why this uh, algorithm is different from the Electra Replace Token Detection task, so I've included the description here and please leave it in the comments if you understand exactly why this is different from the original Replace Token Detection task. But you see the difference in performance between Electra, All Tokens Mass Language Modeling, Replace Mass Language Modeling, and Electra 15% compared to the original Replace Token Detection, showing that you can isolate these different factors by constructing these different pre-training objectives that isolate things like defining the loss over the entire input sequence or introducing this mass token into the pre-training objective that isn't then seen in the test and these downstream tasks like sentiment classification or the miscellaneous glue benchmark tasks. The authors also experiment with other training stages between doing this training of the generator and the discriminator. One strategy is to adversarially train the generator with reinforcement learning. In this case, you treat the uh, decisions, the action space of the different tokens that you can take as discrete actions that the reinforcement learning agent is taking at each time step. So given the input condition on the input as the state representation, the generator is predicting these discrete actions of the tokens to predict. But they find that they are only able to achieve 58% mass language modeling accuracy when using the reinforcement learning trained agent compared to 65% when you're training it with the maximum likelihood, which is the way that you usually train these mass language models. They find that you have poor sample efficiency due to the large action space of text. So even though you might imagine this adversarial objective of having the generator deliberately try to predict these tokens that are hard for the discriminator to uh, predict, that might be useful in the future as the reinforcement learning uh, techniques for these uh, very large action space models with the discrete actions is developed further. But as of now, it doesn't outperform the original Electra objective. The authors also experiment with a two-stage curriculum learning training strategy for training the generator and the discriminator models in the replace token detection framework. So in this training procedure, they start off by training the generator for n steps, then they initialize the discriminator with the generator's weights, 
noting that they take in a similar input output representation. So you can initialize the discriminator with the generator's weights, or you can imagine uh, having a different initialization strategy for scaling up the size of the discriminator with respect to the generator while still preserving the original function in the discriminant and the generator, similar to papers like net to net or different things that look at how you can preserve the function when transferring from a lower capacity model into a larger capacity model. But what they do is they initialize the discriminator with the generator of weights that's been trained for n steps on mass language modeling. And then when they're training the discriminator, they're keeping the weights of the generator frozen, noting that they have these tied weights, or even if they don't have tied weights, they're still both getting better at their respective tasks as they train the generator and the discriminator in the replace token detection framework. So they find that this curriculum for the generator, a uh, discriminator where the generator starts off weak and then gets better throughout training is an interesting strategy, but as shown previously, it doesn't outperform the original strategy of just training them both simultaneously. These plots show the performance improvements between Electra and the BERT model. Particularly, the Electra model gets a higher performance gain when you're using smaller models in the form of the smaller hidden state size, or when you're training the model with less flops or less pre-training compute time. You see the Electra model benefits more from the smaller model sizes and more compute efficient than the BERT model is. Thanks for watching this explanation of the replace token detection task introduced in the Electra framework for pre-training these language models for downstream tasks like natural language inference, sentiment classification, or question answering, all encompassed in the GLUE benchmark, of which the Electra model is able to outperform these mass language modeling trained uh, transformer models like GPT, BERT, and Roberta in XLNet by using less compute and smaller model sizes. The Electra replace token detection pre-training task is more compute efficient because it defines the loss function on all the input tokens and it doesn't introduce this mass token in the train test discrepancy as you introduce this artificial mass token for the pre-training objective. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.